Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And the other day, George reached out to me and he had a great question that I've seen asked by many, many people. And that is, how do you create a mobile menu inside of ClickFunnels? And so let's take a look at uh, George's site. And he was uh, working on it some, just couldn't quite get it to work. And this is what he's got for a mobile menu. And of course, obviously, it looks just like your regular menu would. And so uh, a couple of things he did in here, and I just wanted to show this to you because then we'll um, show you how to make some corrections on it. If we inspect what he did for his his navigation element at the top, he actually just took a regular headline element and then put in a series of hyperlinks for each one of the little sections, put some space in between. And that obviously is a functioning navigation element, but we're going to do a much better job on that. And then also what he does here is he has this here, you see the section dash dash 73883. What this does is it scrolls down the page, but um, the way it scrolls, I don't much care for because when you click on it, it just, it just drops you right there. It's not really a scroll. It just moves you immediately right there. It just jumps to that section. And so again, we'll look at how we can clean that up a little bit too. So what I did is I just kind of made a mock-up of his page with a number of different sections. And when I built this out, and I do this with most all the sites that I build, unless they're only you know two or three sections, is I want to come in and in each section, I will name the section. So we have section D1, which is desktop one for this element. And then I have the mobile section one. And I'd probably give it a more accurate name here. I just did this to delineate between the desktop and the mobile that we're going to end up building. And then I have the how it works section, which will of course go along with how it works. And then the others were the FAQ and the testimonials, and I just cloned it just to make it a little bit longer so we could scroll down on the page. Then what I did is I put in a navigation element. So let me show you what that looks like real quickly, and then we'll jump into a new one and uh, play around with that a little bit. So here's the end result after we build out the whole thing. But now let's just go grab a new one and take a look at how they work. So let's scroll down to our navigation element. And it starts off with blue text and it's kind of small. So let's go into our settings. And the first thing we'll do is let's uh, beef up that font size a little bit. Let's just say 20 is good enough. And let's make it white. And now you can see it a little bit better. And in our case, we're going to go over to advanced because we want five different links. We'll make that five. We're going to bold and we're going to have this center aligned. And then you come back out to your settings and of course we can do whatever we want. In this case here, his first element was login and that one actually went off site. So we'll just say, we're gonna send that over to Google and we're going to have it open up a new page. So you just go down and fill all of these out. Now one of the things here, you'll see the little hashtag, and if you click on that, it'll give you different options. So you could open your pop-up, you could submit a form, you could go to the next URL, close the pop-up, yes or no link if you're doing um, OTOs, upsells or downsells. And then you have here scroll, and it says scroll D1, M1. Now this will only show up with the scroll dash that name if you had already gone in and built your sections and put a name on those sections. So I don't think I showed you how to do that. So let me jump back out and we'll click on manage. And we have one here that I did not name because I wasn't going to link to it. So we're just going to come down to the, the hashtag at the bottom and we're just going to type it in here and we'll just call this testing link and let's click on update now if we go in i don't think it'll get picked up yet but let's see what happens if we go back into our navigation and we click on this oh sure did it's right here already so that makes it really simple for you to be able to just say 
um, click on this, and then when somebody clicks on pricing, then it will move down to your testing link. But of course, we're not going to use the testing link, but let's try one of them down further. Let's try our testimonial. So when somebody clicks on pricing right here, it'll move us down to the testimonial section, and it'll be a smooth scroll instead of just jumping there. So let's go out and preview the the site that we got so far and we had pricing set so if we click on that it will slow scroll us down to testimonial see how it just uh, kind of rolls up slowly so that's much nicer than one of these here I have okay FAQ I have just jumps there I set that up to just jump there whereas the rest of these I have the smooth scroll so it's really simple just go in set up your section name now you should also be able to do this with rows. So let's go into a row and let's rename a row. Let's pick one way down here at the bottom and let's just call this one new row. And click on update. And now let's go back into our navigation element and see if that populated. I don't think it will with rows or elements which you can also scroll to. But let's see here. No, it did not work. So what we want to do is just type in scroll dash new space row is what I called it. So now let us save this element and uh, let's preview it. And so I set that, let me see, we had pricing set to scroll all the way down to the testimonial and order now that also scrolled down to whatever row was here. So again, that just shows that you can name your rows, you can name your elements, and then you can use the scroll feature. And it doesn't have to be just in the navigation menu. You can use that same scroll feature inside of a hyperlink in some text. You can use it on a button. You could use it on a, on a an image. You can use it anywhere that you can put in a hyperlink. You can put in that same code and it will scroll you to anywhere you want to on the page as long as you have the, the data title set, the title for the CSS set. It will scroll you to that section. So let's take this back out. We're not going to need it. We'll click OK, and then we will save our document again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start working on that mobile menu. Because, uh, again, what we want to happen is when we, let's kill that, when we skinny up the screen here and we get down to mobile, we want it just to be a hamburger bun and maybe the word menu on there. That's all we want it to be on the, the top of the site. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to go into our menu and we're going to make it look like this. So how we do that is let me just do this. Let me just add a new section at the top and we could just call it a full width section. It'll be fine. And let's, uh, you know, okay, let's put it, yeah, let's put it way at the top. And now what I did here with this top here is I made it that same red back color or background color. So let's find that red. It's right there. And then we're going to put in two rows. So we're going to add a new row and it's going to be a one column row. And then we're going to just duplicate that row. And of course, we're going to have to adjust the, the padding and everything on here. And then what we want to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to manage our elements and we're going to open up where we have a hidden element. Actually, no, it's not an element. It's a row that I had hidden. So we had the one column row here hidden under section M1 and I'll show you that in a minute. And so we have two, two rows one with this element in it, and then one with the custom CSS JavaScript element in it. And so let's see here. We have, uh, what do we have here for sizing? 20, 20, 10. 20, 20, 10. So it's the section, all zeros. So let's create that with all zeros. Okay, and now inside of our first section, we want to add a new element. And all we're going to do is we're just going to use a subheadline element. And we're going to change the text in here 
to just say menu and we are going to left align that we're going to then change it to white the font color to white and all we're going to do then is go to advanced and we're going to go to our icon picker we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to pick the three lines i think they call it fa bars and you see it already populated in there and so we can jump back out of here and I want a little bit of space there, so let's just put in one space. And that is it for setting up your, your hamburger menu. Now, of course, all of the excitement comes in when we put in our JavaScript box. So let's put that in here. We'll go down and open up our JavaScript. Custom HTML JavaScript to be more accurate. And see, I'm getting a little problem here. For some reason, it's giving me this box. So if you get that, just kind of delete that element out and start over again because sometimes it just gets a little funky in there. Uh, when you're in mobile, it puts in stuff all the time. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to add a new row. Drop that row here. Now let's see if we can get it to work right. Okay, now it worked right without, excuse my cat, uh, without having that extra element in there. And with this, we want to, we can just get rid of all of the padding and everything. I guess we really don't need to because we're going to hide this whole section. And then the next thing is, let's take a look at what we have for our custom JavaScript, HTML, CSS. We got everything thrown in here. All we have is a very, very simple menu. If, if you're doing a menu like this, or if you're doing a menu like we had before, where you had the navigation going straight across, it's essentially the same thing. It's just in the CSS, you tell it to line up differently. That's really all it comes down to. And you see in here, we have where we, uh, the first two, we had links off-site, or actually to another they were actually in his, on, uh, on George's site. They were actually links to other pages in his funnel. And then we have our scrolling action set here. And then we have the names of the elements within the, or the titles, whatever you want to call them, within the menu itself. Then we come down, we do a little bit of CSS just to make it look look decent. Uh, this makes it line up correctly. And then we just have some padding, some font sizes, background colors, things like that. And then down here at the bottom, this is all the magic there is. It's, it's really basic and simple how this menu works. And what it says is when somebody clicks on the menu element up here, and actually we use the entire row, not just the, the headline itself. So when somebody clicks on that top row, what it does is it will show the second row. And within the second row is all of this. So when you click on that, it will show this part right here. And of course, be styled with the CSS. So in order to do that, we have to, well, let's see this. Let's do this. Let's copy this out because we're obviously not going to retype this whole thing. Let's copy this out and pop that in here. Now we're looking for two things. We need the CSS ID selector for this top row. And so we'll come down and we will grab that and we'll go back into custom JavaScript and we will paste that in right here. And then we will go back out one more time, click back on the custom JavaScript box because we need no, I'm sorry, that's not right. That's how I normally do it, is I just hide the custom JavaScript box and then show it. But in this case, yesterday when I was building this, I was having trouble getting the, I was just having trouble to get it to work right. So I just uh, decided, well, I'm just going to go and just do the row instead of the element itself. And so when you're doing this, sometimes you can't quite get it to figure out how to get there. Just go over to the rows at the top and click on manage and come down it'll it'll highlight it in blue and you just click on it and grab it out sometimes the elements get so close to each other that when you hover over them they just kind of go crazy and you can't 
quite figure them out. So let's open this back up and we're going to say that when, when that top row is clicked on, let's show the second row and let's click on save and then we will preview what we got. Let's just reload this one. Now it's showing right here and it's showing um, the menu itself when we're not in mobile view because we have to make a few changes. One of the things we have to do is we have to say we want this to be mobile only, which is it show? Oh, it's showing me the whole, wait, did I make a new section? Yeah, I did. Well, let's do this. Let's just delete out what I just put in right now. It'll make it so much simpler. So let's just delete out this whole section because I have the exact same thing below it. And so now this section at the top, let's just click on manage so we can come down and work on it. That is this section right here, which I have called M1. So that's mobile and it's the first section on the page. So that's why I called it M1. And so it's M1. And then also if we go back into that section, we can see down at the bottom that we have that section set to mobile only. And now if we come back out of the mobile into the desktop, same thing with this section here. This will be D1 for desktop one. And you'll see that set as desktop only. And also you click on the custom CSS and here is your D1. So now let's save this again. So I didn't have to go and recreate all that. I'm pretty sure you got the idea of how you do that. Well, let me, let me just back you up here. How I do it when I build this out originally is I just take this one. I clone it. I call the, I'll just do it. Um, I just call the new one that I cloned. I come in and I will call the new one M1 and I will click on update and then I will tell it that I want it to be mobile only and it'll flip you over to the mobile page and there it is right on the page for you. And then what you would do here is you just delete out this element and you just get to work on building the rest of it. So let me just delete out that one. Actually, let me do it from here. Okay. When in doubt, click on the eyeball first to make it disappear. And then, then when you're sure that you got the right one to delete, then hit the delete button and it will be gone. Okay. Now let's save this. Let's click on the template, opt in template as it says here, and reload the page. And I'll grab a drink of water while it's loading. So we have our desktop navigation set and now we will just squeeze this down and we will go to mobile. Well, okay, we still have one problem and let's go back in. What we need to do is take this second row and we need to hide it because as I said before, what's going to happen is the, when we click on the top row, it's going to show the second row. So the second row has to be hidden before we go into it. So now let's do this one more time. Squeeze it down. There we go. Now we have just the menu. And as we click on it, we can just toggle it open and shut and we can go how it works and just scroll all the way down or we can click one of these buttons and go off to Google or Facebook or whatever I have set. So I think that should have um, given you an idea of how you can set up a mobile menu inside of ClickFunnels. It's really simple, basic code, and it really shouldn't take you more than maybe half an hour. Uh, if that much, you just got to put in what all your links are and tell it where you want them to go to. So if you got any questions on that, just feel free to reach out to me. Have a great day.